I'm Peter, as Steve already said. Uh, I work on the IP stewards team, uh, specifically on the IPDX team, which takes care of developer experience needs for IP stewards now, but our long-reaching goal is to expand further beyond that. Uh, and yeah, Steve being the great encourager he is, he encouraged me to explore GitHub configuration space, and that's what brought us here today. I'm going to talk about how we're thinking of configuring GitHub as code instead of just relying on UI transfers for that. So the agenda for this talk uh, is that first, I want to explore the reasons why we even went on this endeavor, because it's a pretty big one, so we better have good reasons for that. Uh, next, I'm going to quickly go through what we decided to use for, to, to actually achieve that. And finally, I'm going to show you uh, how it works in IPFS organization. So why configuration as code? Well, the main reason is that doing it through UI on a scale just doesn't work. Like so many different checkboxes, so many different settings pages. Like if you want to manage anything beyond a scale of a couple of repositories and a couple of users, uh, it's just really hard to track and trying to enforce any best practices across bigger space it just becomes unfeasible. So what we were really looking for was to be able to, exp oh, to represent GitHub configuration uh, in a human-friendly format uh, and store it in GitHub repository and then have some tooling that is able to translate that into actual GitHub changes. Uh, and it, as it turns out, like, it comes with quite nice properties because it, for months, it enables collaboration like when you can imagine making GitHub changes through, through PRs, uh, you can discuss them, you can get counter proposals for people involved in the change, uh, you can get reviews for them, uh, which is just nice. You can preserve context next to the changes you made, not, not only in the PRs, but also in line with the things you're changing. Uh, it's more secure if you don't need uh, high permission levels, uh, because you can achieve the same through making a PR to a repository. I, not so many people need, need admin rights of everything. Uh, it opens up possibilities for automation uh, because since most of your changes, or all of them eventually, uh, make it through a single, single repository that handles GitHub configuration, you can do interesting stuff like uh, reacting to a uh, new repository being added and ensuring that it has brand protection rules set up, for example. Uh, it increases visibility because you no longer have to rely on making hundreds and hundreds of API calls uh, to retrieve information about your organ organization. You just look at this human-friendly representation and quickly gl glance through it to figure out what's there. Uh, you can also, also write scripts that extract the information you're really interested in without worrying about hitting any GitHub rate limits. Uh, yeah, and most importantly, it's feasible at scale. Like with that many different resources to handle, uh, these are the numbers for IPFS organization. Uh, yeah, without the help of machines, like it's, it's really impossible to track all of it. Uh, oh, last but not least, like if you open it up to people, like you no longer have to find this one person who has enough permissions to do some action for you. Instead, you just create a PR and request a change you want to see to be made. Uh, so is there anything that actually enables that uh, in the wild? So as it turns out, there wasn't, at least <laughs> not to the extent in which I imagined it. Uh, it's starting to change a bit. Like recently, GitHub itself uh, open sourced a project called Entitlements, which to some extent covers it, but only on a small level in which it can uh, manage access to the organization itself and access to specific teams based on uh, text files. Uh, but what we did, uh, we went ahead and built it from scratch, uh, a project called GitHub Management, which is Terraform-based. Uh, so yeah, it's Terraform in the back, which takes care of actually applying the, the changes you express uh, in a YAML format 
to GitHub and back, and everything in between is handled through GitHub Actions. Uh, and what it can do, it can uh, help you with uh, managing uh, level access control of organizations, teams, and repositories, but not only that, also you can tweak any settings, any configuration settings that organization team or repository has. And what I think is really important is that it can coexist with people making changes through UI, because on day one, when you start using this framework, you don't have to switch everyone. And you can, you can, it, it can work with tandem with people using the UI, and because it supports two-way synchronization feature from the YAML to GitHub and the other way around, pulling changes from GitHub and reflecting them in the YAML. Uh, and yeah, it all sounds good, but does it really work? Uh, as it turns out, it does. Uh, we also have it set up, for example, for the P2P organization. And not too long ago, I went on this endeavor of trying to uh, remove inactive users from the organization itself, teams, and repositories. Uh, it affected more than 100 different individuals. So if you can imagine trying to track that many people in any other way, uh, that would be like pretty much us going to uh, W3C <laughs> and spending, <laughs> trying, trying to achieve anything there. So instead here, I, I could just create a PR, mention everyone, and start the discussion. As you can see, it was quite fruitful. Uh, there were some counter arguments being made there. So uh, it was productive in a way that, that we changed our approach to, to this cleanup. And instead of removing people from the organization, for example, we decided to just create a team that has uh, no heightened privilege access to any resources in the organization, but still lets you display the, the honor badge of being part of the organization. And with all that set up, I was able to merge the PR within a week, uh, which I think is quite impressive, uh, given the size of the trend. Uh, and what's even better, there is, there, there is a bonus point to be made here, because later on I found out that this exact same discussion about not removing people from the organization uh, had been had a few years back, and we even had already a team set up in the organization for exactly this reason. But since we had no way of storing the context next to the resource itself, I had no way of finding that out, so I only found out about this post factum. And now, yeah, we have it. We we have the context where it should be. So hopefully, the next person who comes after me can just read it and, and figure it out. <laughs> so, how does it all come together in PFS org specifically? Uh, yeah, let's go and see. So. Uh, this is what GitHub Management is. It's just a GitHub repository in IPFS GitHub Management. It was created from a template repository in the protocol org, uh, GitHub Management template. Uh, what's pretty cool about it is that it comes with an auto-upgrade features. So whenever we make improvements to the, to the template repository, uh, we can just run a, a workflow here that pulls in the, the new feature that, that got enabled in, in GitHub Management Framework. Uh, when you get here to this repository and want to work with it, uh, you're greeted with, oh, with a readme file uh, that has a bunch of useful documentation links. Uh, from a contributor's perspective, probably the most important one is to how to work with GitHub Management. And it explains things of how to create new things, how to modify the existing stuff. Uh, but I think what's the most useful thing here is a full example of a configuration file, of a YAML configuration file that lists all the things that can be configured for GitHub management, what they mean, what's the syntax, and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the file I would recommend viewing if you make your way to GitHub management repository. Uh, and now let's go back to the, the main page. Uh, what I want to show you is where to find the IPFS uh, YAML configuration file. So you would have to go to the GitHub directory here and find a file which base name is the same as the organization name, so ipfs.yaml. 
And here we have all the resources that GitHub management supports at this point, uh, listed in the in the YAML formats. So if you, um, so yeah, you, you can view everything here, and uh, you can start proposing new changes. So uh, let's let's try to propose a, to change code owners in the GitHub management repository itself. Uh, I would look for GitHub management here, and uh, code owners content right here. So right now it's just me, but that doesn't scale too well uh, if something happens to me. So maybe let's change it to uh, IPDX team instead. Uh, and just take the change, uh, change code owners to the team. Cool. And let's create a pull request. So there we go. That's how easy is proposing changes through, through GitHub management. Uh, what's going to happen right now is that like a bunch of workflows are going to start. Uh, in particular, a plan workflow that is required uh, is going to start. And what it does, it uh, performs Terraform plan action. Uh, so it's going to try to find out what kind of changes to, to GitHub it has to make so that the configuration that, that we have in the repository is reflected. Uh, what's also interesting is that it's going to uh, post a comment on the PR with the output of this plan. And also, after we merge this PR, this exact plan that was shown to people viewing the PR is going to be applied. Like, so we, we have certainty that these are exactly the, the actions that, that we can expect to happen after the merge. Uh, but yeah, what is missing, for example, here, and what would be a cool automation is that uh, I know that IPFS IPDX team doesn't exist yet. So it would be nice if we had some workflow that could check that for me and tell me that, oh, you're doing a thing that won't work. <laughs> uh, so all, all things like that are possible, but just not yet implemented. <laughs> uh, but I have another PR here so that you can see how it looks like. I got a review from my teammate that uh, this is a PR that creates IPDX team in IPFS organization. Uh, I have a I have a plan that tells me that a team will be created uh, with two members to add maintainer level in it. Uh, all sounds good. <laughs> oh. Wait. Oh, there we go. So yeah, let's go ahead and merge it, and it's going to create this team for me in just a short, short second, because uh, after a merge and apply workflow gets started, that actually downloads the plan that was created during pull request workflow and applies it to GitHub. And in the meantime, while it works, uh, let me just show you one last little thing that I mentioned before is the sync workflow. So this one uh, is the one which actually goes to, to GitHub, makes a bunch of API calls tries to find out what's the current state of the GitHub configuration, of, of the real GitHub configuration is, and it compares that with the YAML configuration file in this repository. And it, if it finds any differences to, between actual GitHub configuration and the YAML file, it will uh, create, oh, it's frozen. Uh, it will create a PR that updates the YAML file so for example, here we have a PR created by a bot that tells me that uh, someone added Kyle to, as a collaborator, if I remember correctly. Yeah, as a collaborator to go graph sync repository with push access. So this change was made through UI, but it was like really simple to just pull it in into the, uh, our framework. So I think by now, 
our IPDX team should be here. Yeah, there it is. So the more worked. Uh, I think that's that's my cue and time. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm around. Uh, I go by Galar uh, in Filecoin Slack and, and GitHub. Uh, yeah, come say hi. Let's let's talk more about how it works.